Have a look at Rory McIlroy in the opening event in Hawaii. We could see he was adding different shot shapes to his tee shots. Now, there's a reason he's been doing this. We can see that he's got his standard shot, then he's got his high draw, which has always been in Rory's locker. Then we've started to see him adding a fade in and then a low bullet. What's the reason for him adding all of these flights into his game? Is it something that we're going to see improve his driving accuracy over the year? And is this something that you can learn to apply to your game? So why is it that Rory's actually changed and why has he changed it? I've got a really interesting article that I was sent. So have a little look at this. This was, it said, question was, what do you call it your low driver? Where does that come from? or come about and how long did it take you to implement it into your arsenal of drives so Rory said that he'd been able to play it for a while but hadn't been able to hit it or be able to be comfortable doing it in competition he said I think it was just a diff he had a different setting on last year's driver which is he when he was playing the M3 M4 and he was able to experiment around with that and he was able to hit that lower tee shot with this but he couldn't necessarily get all of the shots in. So this is where I think that the custom fit for anyone who's gonna get custom fit, take a lot out of this article here. It's not all about being fit to your bombed out best drive. It's having the ability to change what that ball flight's going to look like. So he said, he'd been working with the TaylorMade guys and um, with the M5, he said, I, normally when I go for testing, he said, I can hit the ball 320 in the air we all wish we could do that, don't we? And they said, and to maximise my distance, that's normally what the fitting is all about. He said, but I realised that last year, I've got more than enough distance to play. Um, and one of his goals for this year was to increase his driving accuracy as he wanted to get it up into the 60% range. So he hasn't been anywhere near the 60s for the last couple of years. So being able to change this is going to be huge to him to get him hitting more fairways, which will therefore make a massive difference to probably is scoring. We all associate with, what was it, long, high, bomb drivers. What we, saw, what we saw, though, is that he was hitting a couple of fades and some really low ones. So he's saying that when he started to hit these shots, which was having a driver with more spin so that he could launch it lower and it would hold its line on that trajectory. That's interesting, isn't it? You know, because we all talk about low spin. He's talking about something that's spinning higher but keeping it lower. So obviously, if you've got something that's really low spin and you launch it low, it's never going to get in the air. If it's got a bit more spin in the driver but you've got the ability to hit it low, it's going to hold its line because less spin generally means that we see more shape on the ball, okay? Which is why a lot of guys really like to launch it very high with low spin because if you launch it high and it's got no spin, it's the launch angle is going to help that ball to stay in the air providing you've got enough club head speed, that is. So for me, that was the key. He said that what he's been able to do is get this so that he's able to hit the driver a lot lower and they've now had a club built for him that's going to allow him to hit these different trajectories. So what are those different trajectories going to be all about? So having a look at the three flights, first one we're going to have a look at is that high draw off the tee. So tee the ball up just a little higher. What we're going to do, get the ball further forwards in the stance, angle the upper body to the right a little bit so I hit it more on the up, okay? What else I like to do, just pull my right shoulder back a little bit more, which guarantees I'm going to get that inside angle of approach into the ball. What you guys might want to look at is if you struggle with where that club face is going to be moving, remember you want that club face to be close to your path. If you're out to win very, very slightly, but you want to hit a draw, you've got to make sure that the club face is close, so it at least gets the ball moving right to left in the air. My pattern's a draw, but I can hit a fade. All I'm going to do is change that in a minute. But if you hit out to win, what you've got to make sure is the club face is close to that path. That is the most important thing. So having a look at this, moving this one out, Start this one down the right side of the fairway, over here, picking out that start line, a bit more angled with the upper body to the right, and then stay behind it to really hit up for that high draw. Little bit low in the face, but it got the draw pattern, which is what I was after, so got half of that. That was just a contact point issue that didn't get the height, but overall, got the shape that I was after. Now, having a look at the fade. Okay, I'm gonna tee the ball down just a tiny little bit lower here for the fade. Not by much, okay? 
But when you're hitting the fade, you might be slightly more level in your attack angle, you will be with a high draw. So that could be where you want to be looking at individual for the T height. For me, I'm always a little bit into out, but I know that as long as I've got the club face more open to the path, therefore I'm going to hit that fade. So for me, that feeling is going to be, I'm going to get in it a little bit, feel like I'm out to win, a little bit more in the swing, but I'm going to really rotate through what my feeling is that my thought in my head is don't let that toe pass the heel as much. I'm not holding it off. I still have it with speed, but it's making sure that club face is a little bit open so that ball can drop a little bit to the right in flight. So look at that start line here, up that left side of the fairway. Body aimed left. And I'm going to really just try and remain tall to get myself in that cut, keep that face open to the path. So that was really good for me there. That's hit that little fade. That's really come back really nice. That was absolutely ideal. Now we'll have a look at the last one. This could be the most important one for Rory. Talking about fairway finder. Tee the ball down and tee the ball down a little bit lower. This is going to mean that I'm trying to hit this a little bit lower in the face. What we're going to do is make sure that we're staying more on top of the ball as we discussed earlier. It keeps you more in your posture. And this is then therefore making sure that you aren't changing that attack angle. So I don't change my body position as much at address. You've got it a lot lower down, a little bit more neutral here. Feels very even with the weight. I'm not trying to create anywhere near as much spine tilt. I'd like I stay on top of the ball for longer. Therefore hit this low fairway finding tee shot. That was a perfect low one squeezed out right there. That's what I would use for a lot for myself. Talked about earlier in the video, but it's seen. Can you experiment to get the three different flights? Remember, a lot of this is going to be done at address with weight distribution and ball position. And all these things are going to be relative to how you swing the club. Find your way of moving the ball about. Experiment with those variables and see if you can alter the uh, trajectory level to the degree that someone like a Rory McIlroy can. Hopefully, you got loads out of this, guys. We've seen there, those flights can be altered. It's great to be able to do it because if you're on certain golf courses, you are going to need to move the ball sometimes. Have a go at it. If you've really enjoyed this video, comment below. Let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. As always, thanks for watching and talk with you again very soon.